How's it going and welcome to the channel. I actually shot this video yesterday, the intro at least, and I didn't like how it went, so I'm reshooting it again. But anyways, welcome to the channel. I uh, wanted to give you guys a quick update on the Corvette that was stolen. So if you guys have been watching my past videos, the Z06 was stolen now about 12 days ago. Um, the update is Geico sent me the paperwork to begin the appraisal process. Um, they won't actually start the actual appraisal until 14 days have passed, which will happen on this Monday. But it's about seven documents in here. You have to fill them out, notarize them, and then send them back to Geico. So it's basically like your statement on what happened to the vehicle. So that's a quick update on the Corvette. I want to talk about the go-kart in the back though, and that's what the focus of this video is going to be. And then I'll mention a project that we're going to be working on over the next several months later on in the video. And I got a new mic by the way, so thank you for all the feedback to everyone who um, did leave feedback on the past videos. And I hope the quality of the audio is a lot better in these videos. But if not, leave a comment, drop a like, drop a dislike, let me know why you do or don't like the videos, and I will try to improve them. It'll really help me with the channel, it'll help me get some more views and get some more subscribers and continue growing. So with that, I'm just going to describe some quick tweaks from when I took to the, the cart to the track, and what I'm going to do to improve my lap times, and what I'm going to do to improve my experience inside the cart. I hope it helps you guys get into it, and I hope it helps you guys improve your experience if you do decide to buy a cart and start karting. Hold on just a sec. So before we get to the car, I just want to show you guys a couple of things that I had to buy for the car before I went to the racetrack so you have an idea of how much they cost and what you'll need before you get to the racetrack. So here it goes. So here it is. Um, so first thing is you're going to need two stroke premix. I bought the Motools. This bottle costed me $21 at the shop, although you can find it some places a little bit cheaper, anywhere as low as $17. Um, you'll need to do about a 17 to 1 mix, anywhere from 17 to 20, although it is recommended you probably stick to 17 to 18. So just a heads up, you'll need some of that. Other thing is you need the IR beacon to pick up your lap times. I bought this on fasttechracing.com. They have one day shipping. Uh, this beacon costs approximately $50, $55 plus shipping, so I ended up paying $60 after everything. This will allow me to keep track of my times um, and let me know how well I'm doing on each lap. Then the final thing here is, got my handy dandy little chair here helping me out, but is 100 octane race fuel. So I bought this. This is actually going to be mixed with pump fuel, so it's going to be a one to one ratio. And I'll be mixing it with 91 pump fuel and that will give me about a 95 octane rating. Um, and mixing it with the Motul's two stroke to get my fuel for the cart. So just a heads up, those are some things that I had to buy before I went out to the racetrack this first time. And something you'll probably have to buy as well. Well, actually, you will need to buy. So keep that in mind. Um, <clears throat> the cart does not go through a lot of fuel. So I went and did about 100 laps that day. And I only went through two gallons of fuel. So as you can see, like you're not going to end up spending too much money on fuel. This uh, 100 octane Sunoco fuel costed me $60 for the drum. It's five gallons. That comes out to about like 12 bucks a gallon. Um, and then when you mix it with pump fuel, which is about 350, uh, you can do the math there. It gets actually not that expensive, um, especially for how long you're going to be on the track. So 100 laps is pretty exhausting, um, and I don't think you're going to be doing a lot more than that on a daily basis. So, anyways, with that, let's get to the cart. So, as you guys can see, the cart is basically as it is. The side pods are off right now. Um, I'll just that's the way it fits in my truck I have to take them off uh, but as you see they just fit in right there so starting out we'll just start from the rear on things I want to improve as you guys can see here this exhaust uh, cover it has a slight crack in it and because this is a two-stroke it does spit quite a bit of oil you can see all the oil build up here that's something I definitely want to look into fixing on a four-stroke engine you won't have that issue since you don't do a premix um, unfortunately on the two-stroke Perilla Leopard motors that is an issue um, so I'll look to fix that just because I don't want to be spitting in the back of uh, or spit onto other racers who are with me that'd be quite annoying another thing is if you plan to competitively race you see this rear bumper here that I have the number 58 attached to um, it needs to extend to the length of the tires so it needs to cover the rear tire so what I'll be doing is I'll get, be getting a U um, piece of metal here and I'll just be bolting it onto here to extend the bumper there are plastic ones that are made but I want to make this kind of like a budget build and I want people to be interested in getting into karting and everything and just like a way to get your foot into the door into racing in general so 
I'm gonna be doing it as cheap as possible. Um, next thing I just wanna cover is this chain here. So one thing to note while you're constantly um, running the cart is you always wanna keep this lubed because it will end up snapping if you don't. Um, so just a heads up on that, um, something to definitely note. And then as we move on up to the seat, um, as you can see, it's all here. Um, one thing is if you look right here, this wear that's happening down here, and that's because the seat is sitting just slightly too low. I'll go over how I'm gonna fix that in a later video, but I just wanna mention that the seat is also a bit too large for me. So with these types of carts, there's a lot of vibration going on. And in fact, there's so much vibration that when you're racing, it can actually start, cause you to start having trouble breathing. And that's what was happening to me with these tires that are on the, the cart now versus the seven inches I have prop, it propped up on the back. So with these smaller tires, I was getting so much vibration that I was starting to cough during the race and it was getting hard to breathe um, while I was running my laps on the track. So definitely something I'll be also showing you guys how I'm going to improve, but basically I'll be adding side padding here so that it's a snug fit and that my body isn't really rolling as I'm racing. Then the last and final thing I wanted to go over was these, um, as you can see here, this is the brake and this is the gas um, and your foot sits right here. And th what I have in my hand is what I'm about to explain. And so when your foot's, foot's sitting on this uh, platform here, it's sliding back and forth as you're going through corners and you're constantly tapping this and it's kind of like causing you to um, depress in this uh, gas pedal. And same with the brake. So what will happen is as your foot's shaking, as you're going through corners through the vibrations, you accidentally, well, it's pretty tough to do accidentally, but what I mean is um, it's, Basically, it's uncontrollable. You'll start to um, depress the brake and accelerator without trying to do so. So what you have to do is actually install these right here. Um, these are called heel stops. And the gentleman at the track who's actually been helping me out uh, gave these to me for free. So I have one here, and then I also have one set right here. But basically what I'll do is I will drill into this base plate and put them in a position where my heel can rest against these and then when I'm going through a corner and say I don't want to use uh, the accelerator or the brake I can rest my heel here without having to worry about putting it onto the brake pedal or the uh, gas pedal so I'll be going over how I do that as well definitely some tips so those are things that are going to help improve my experience and I think I'm going to try and do them before I get back out to the track oh yeah and then one last thing is as you guys can see I have the Micron 3 right here um, starts up and everything so there it goes that tracks my times now with that said you need to have this transmitter here in a position where it's not gonna be um, it's basically gonna get picked up by the infrared transmitter that you have on the track and so when it's sitting up here for some reason it does not always pick up and I've been told that mounting it actually down right here is a lot better position so I'll be zip tying it to this pole here so I'll reposition that into a place where I think it'll get a little bit better readings and my track times will always be tracked um, that being said so that's the majority of what I wanted to talk about uh, as far as like the video goes and I'll be going over some more stuff but to the $500 race car. So me and my friend Alex are actually doing, I don't know if I had a bug right there, what it was, but something irritating my neck, are gonna be doing 24 hours of lemons. Um, sorry about that, something keeps irritating my neck. But yeah, so we're gonna be doing 24 hours of lemons and we're gonna be building a car from the ground up. We're using a 94 uh, Mustang chassis and we've actually bought an engine with a pro charger on it for $150 out of a T-Bird that We'll hopefully rebuild and get in the car. We were planning on doing the race in September, um, but I think it's a little bit too soon. Um, and issue being that we don't even have a roll cage or anything in the car and we're trying to budget build this car. So we're trying to keep it under $500 and get everything going in it. But when you're cramped on time, you kind of can't shop for deals. So we're gonna be doing the December race at the Sonoma Raceway. And we have a team of six drivers right now. So I will be covering a lot of that build. It's something that I hopefully We'll bring to the channel um first video will probably drop in a couple days for that and um hopefully it's something that you guys will be interested in just to see how we build the car how we put it together and how we keep the build below 500 dollars. one thing that is important to note for 24 hour of lemons though the safety equipment has no limit on how much you spend so that's going to go 
you know, going to be quite expensive actually. And I'll cover the cost of everything just in case anyone wants to do that in the future. But it's definitely something that that's fun to do if you have a bunch of friends who are interested in automotive stuff. Um, and definitely something like that you can all hang out and do together. So I'll cover that. If you liked the video, make sure to lop, drop a like, lop a like, <laughs> drop a like. Um, and if you didn't like it, make sure to hit the dislike button and let me know why you guys didn't like it. Comment below. Um, I really appreciate everyone who's watched the video all the way through. And like I said, if you did like the channel and the uh, content that I'm putting out, do hit the just subscribe button. I can't really talk right now because uh, I guess I'm shy in front of the camera. But yeah, so <laughs> hit the subscribe button if you like the video, please help me. But yeah. All right. Thank you. And bye.